Good evening and welcome to a new episode of our weekly program, The Week in 30 Minutes. The English News Department has prepared a variety of reports that highlight the main events which are currently at the forefront of the news. Our committed team of reporters has visited some of the latest campaigns, press conferences and meetings to ensure our audience remains updated with the events that are now trending in the local arena. Today's episode will take us to a number of attractive and colorful locations and we will hear from different voices who wanted to share important messages with our valued audience. We have a special feature on the program. We have the honor of welcoming on our show this evening Mr. Khalid Amin Taj, the Secretary General of the Kuwait-Pakistan Friendship Association or KPFA. We will be meeting with him very shortly to do a proper introduction. We will also have the opportunity to watch a report on an event organized by the association celebrating both the National Day of Kuwait and Pakistan. We will also be asking Mr. Amin Taj to shed light on the distinct mutual ties between Kuwait and Pakistan. Following our exclusive interview with Mr. Amin Taj, we will continue with the show viewing reports on local events including a press conference organized by the United Nations Development Program Office in Kuwait on the occasion of the visit of the High Commissioner for Refugees to the state of Kuwait. Another report will cover a special event organized by the French Institute in Kuwait. But let us first introduce to you our special guest this evening, Mr. Khalid Amin Taj, the Secretary General of the Kuwait-Pakistan Friendship Association, KPFA. Mr. Thank Khaled, you. welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Welcome well, to the thank show. You, Mr. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mazin. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, we will be back to start our exclusive interview with our special guest. So please, please stay tuned. Welcome back to the program. Again, our special guest this evening, Mr. Khalid Amin Taj, is the Secretary General of the Kuwait-Pakistan Friendship Association, or KPFA, the entity that recently organized an event to commemorate the national days of both Kuwait and Pakistan. Mr. Khalid, thank you again for joining us tonight. It's our pleasure to have you with us here. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about the Kuwait-Pakistan Friendship Association and its activities. It's, it's our pleasure. Uh, before talking about the event, uh, we uh, want <coughs> our audience to know more about the KBFA, the association, the objective the behind its establishment and everything about it. Uh, thank you, Reba. Actually, Kuwait Pakistan Friendship Association is a non-political and non-governmental organization which was established by uh, almost 24 years ago, 24 years ago okay. by a very renowned personality of Kuwait, Mr. Mubarak Sadun al Mutawa. He is the patronage of our uh, KPFA. And the main objective of uh, this association creating this to reduce the gap between the Kuwaitis and Pakistanis and provide a common platform to come together and have exchange of views and uh, to, to enhance further relation between the Kuwaitis and the two communities here we are living in. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the event we, are, uh, we mentioned today, what we're talking about this evening. Uh, how many, uh, first of all, about the Pakistani community, uh, how strong is it? How, how many Pakistanis? In, in Kuwait, there's almost 120,000 Pakistanis. 120,000? 120, 120,000 in different fields. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they are, they are working in the development of Kuwait. Uh, it is an honor for KPFA, uh, being an organization with the Kuwait and Pakistani name. So we celebrate annually the Kuwait-Pakistan National Days, annual, being uh, mm -hmm. in 25th and 26th being the Kuwait. National Days Kuwait, and, and Kuwait, 23rd yeah. of March being the National Day of Pakistan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, okay. So we jointly celebrate these two events together. 
in May. And uh, in in March or something like this. Oh, okay, yeah. it's it's not a fixed date. It's not a fixed date, but okay. it depends on the on the availability of the ambassadors and the availability of the dignitaries right. that we celebrate so actually. Do you see uh, a lot of participation? Uh, this from year both was sides? A very special for us mm -hmm. because um, uh, the governor of Ferbania, His Excellency Sheikh uh, Faisal Al Hamoud Malik Al Sabah, mm -hmm. he attended uh, the event and uh, with with the ambassador of Pakistan and a lot of Kuwaiti dignitaries were there and we were very much honored for him that he graced the occasion mm -hmm. and we will be he'll be remembered for all you know, with the good words that he has and his good intentions to promote this association. Tell us a little bit more about the Pakistani-Kuwaiti uh, friendship ties. Uh. Uh, Kuwait and Pakistan, as you know, um, uh, has a very good relations. Mm -hmm. For years, yes. For a year, the governmental level, mm -hmm. it, um, uh, you, you have a very good relation in all uh, aspects. And both Kuwait and Pakistan shared, uh, you say, a commonality mm -hmm. on the major issues of the world. Uh, so these these are the things which led to creation of uh, this association actually, you know. And uh, above that, Kuwait and Pakistan, we share the same culture and uh, we share the same faith. So mm -hmm. so these are all things which which bringing us together actually and reducing. And KPFA is providing the platform for them to reduce this gap among the two communities to come together and spread the word of peace and love amongst them. I think we have now a report about the event. Uh, uh, we had the opportunity to view this, uh, to come and uh, uh, have a part, uh, to take part in this uh, report. So um, we'll watch the report and then yeah, come back we'll and ask back. you a few more sure. questions My if you pleasure. don't mind. To continue My our pleasure. discussion. My pleasure. Yeah, sure. My pleasure. The Kuwait-Pakistan Friendship Association, or KPFA, organized an event at the Crown Plaza Hotel to celebrate both National Days of Kuwait and Pakistan the two brotherly nations that enjoy historically cordial relations at all levels. The event was attended by guests of honor, the governor of Al Farwaniya, His Excellency Sheikh Faisal Hamoud Al Malik Subah, and the ambassador of Pakistan, His Excellency Ulam Dasgir. Here is more on the event in this report by Salim Al Kandari. Kuwait Pakistan Friendship Association held a celebration in honor of both Kuwait and Pakistan National Days. Speaking on the occasion, Sheikh Faisal Lahmoud Al Sabah, the governor of Farwaniya, spoke highly of Kuwait Pakistan relations and said Pakistanis are playing a vital role in the development of both Kuwait and Pakistan. He also praised KPFA for its activities and the role it is playing to enhance further relations between Kuwait and Pakistan. The Ambassador of Pakistan, His Excellency Ghulam Daskar, praised KPFA for its role in developing also the furthermore relations between Kuwait and Pakistan with its mutual relations on all possible fronts. This is um, a Pakistan uh, Kuwait Friendship Association. They organize uh, to celebrate Pakistan Day and Kuwait Day together. So this event was uh, initially scheduled in March, uh, which is also coinciding with 23rd March, which is Pakistan National Day, and earlier was Kuwait Day. So, but it was delayed for, for about a month due to some, some reasons. Uh, this uh, event is very important, which provides an opportunity for Pakistanis and Kuwaiti brothers to sit together and celebrate jointly this uh, event, which is a, is a great event, uh, I, I should say. And um, as you know that Pakistan and Kuwait uh, are very close and uh, they have very cordial relations. Uh, the people of Kuwait, people of Pakistan, they love each other. And this uh, occasion is a, a, a demonstration of the love and affection to each other and uh, I commend the organizers to have this event uh, where you see the friends from Pakistan, friends from Kuwait are together to have joint celebrations. KPFA is a non-political organization aimed at promoting social and cultural ties between the people of Kuwait and Pakistan and also addresses the issues of Pakistani citizens residing in Kuwait. I think uh, this occasion is coming uh, every year, as you know, 
an occasion of the friendship between uh, Kuwait uh, citizens and Pakistanis, not only in Kuwait but also in Pakistan itself. Alhamdulillah, it takes 25 years. Uh, Alhamdulillah, after Kuwait liberation, we make this gathering and uh, this meeting this year been delayed because of the circumstances and some accidents happened in Lahore, as you remember, and sometimes happened in the uh, Arabic world around us. But uh, recently we are doing this occasion because we are uh, trying to insist about our unity and our uh, brotherhood uh, together as uh, two nations or two countries. And this is uh, every year, as I said, to uh, have some uh, sharing feelings, sharing ideas, uh, because there is uh, some activism being done through one year, so we need somebody to know about it. In our speeches and our report, our uh, people, like uh, General Assembly, uh, they are listening to us, so we are welcoming you and welcoming Kuwait TV, welcoming everybody to share us this occasion. Kuwait-Pakistan Friendship Association had held this celebration in honor of Kuwait's Independence Day and National Holidays and also the Pakistan Independent Day and also to cherish the moment and share the ideas and thoughts that had taken place over the whole year. From Crown Plaza Hotel, this is Sam Kendiri reporting for the week in 30 minutes. Welcome back to the program. Again, our special guest this evening, Mr. Khalid Amin Taj, the Secretary General of the Kuwait-Pakistani Friendship Association. Welcome back, Mr. Khalid. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking about <coughs> the friendship ties between Kuwait and Pakistan and about uh, the 120,000 strong uh, Pakistani community. Tell us a little bit more about the association. What type of events are you involved in, as well as what would you like to see de being developed in this association in the near future? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mazin. <coughs> Mr. Mazin, as you know that besides celebrating the national days of Kuwait and Pakistan, we are helping the local Pakistani community here as well. And uh, we have created three committees in this regard, which is called the Educational Assistance Committee, the Medical Assistance Committee, and the Young Professionals Committee. Now, the Educational Assistance Committee is, is the, headed by Dr. Ali al uh, which help the, um, the Pakistani families, the poor families, and the kids who cannot afford to buy a books when the new academic year starts, mm -hmm. you know. So every year, we support 40 to 50 students by buying them a book, a set of books for them. Yeah. So this, this committee helps the local community and they are working with the local Pakistani school, coordination with the local Pakistani school and the principals. The medical assistance committee is headed by uh, Dr. Aftab Ahmed, who is a neurosurgeon at the Ibn Sina Hospital, a very uh, famous person. Mm -hmm. So he has the medical assistance committee and he helps, we, we help those people, the Pakistanis who cannot afford some medical test, mm -hmm. medicines or something like this. So we are studying case by case and we are helping these people. The Young Professional Committee is, uh, is headed by Engineer Waji and they are looking for and they are guiding the young people, the young students to which career path they should select in their future so they can be successful in this. So in these three categories, the KPFA is focusing on all this. Excellent, that's yeah. nice to know. Yeah. Yes. What about the cultural events? Uh, the culture actually we um, we are doing um, uh, in Ramadan we arrange the iftar dinner for both communities Kuwaitis mm -hmm. and Pakistani then the members of the association to come close together yeah. have views exchange their views and to enhance the ties between the two brotherly nation which has a lot sharing culture and everything so in this regards we do that yeah 
Yeah. And also we celebrate um, the, uh, the, the event for our national poet, Alama Iqbal, mm -hmm. who dreamt about Pakistan, that Pakistan should came into being. Mm -hmm. And then the struggle, Qadi Azam led that, and Pakistan came into being in 1947. So because of that, we celebrate his, uh, his birth as a national poet, uh -huh. and uh, we organize this all. It seems an interesting uh, event to organize. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah yes. Mr. Khaled, as a Kuwaiti, uh, it's the first time I hear about uh, this association. I mean, uh, what would you like to see? Uh, uh, how can we help you? Or, uh, you know, we are doing our part in letting people <coughs> know. I mean, you should be promoting it more with the media, uh, maybe now with the social media and so on. Exactly, Mr. Malin. This is what I wanted to tell, that this association is open to everyone. Mm -hmm. Kuwaitis and Pakistanis, they can come, join together, and to enhance the ties between the two brotherly nations and spread the word of peace and love among mm -hmm. themselves. So this is the, the association is open to everyone. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Uh, any other uh, thoughts you would like to add to our audience at the end of this uh, uh, interesting interview? Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, Hiba it's and Mr. Pleasure. Malin. It's our pleasure. And uh, really, it, it's, it gives an opportunity for me to, to say about about the KPFA, which is almost 24 years old. Yeah. And I think uh, not a lot of people know about that. It's right. limited. So thank you for the KTV <laughs> too, and uh, you guys that mm -hmm. you gave an opportunity that we come and we talked about this. And this association is open to everyone. They can come in, they can join hand with us. It's a, as I said, it's a non-political, non-governmental organization. Mm -hmm. We can work as an NGO. We can help to benefit the community. And in this way, we, we will carry on. You know. We yeah. hope you'll come and visit us again in the near future. Uh, we'll, be we'll touch bases with you again. It will be our pleasure as well that you join us in our national Thank event for the so next much. year. We'll be, and we will we'll definitely uh, invite you. Thank you. And you uh, also, Thank you can you come so and join us and you can see that's what KPFA is pleasure. doing. It's yeah. Thank sure. you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Khalid, thank you so much for accepting our invitation this evening. On behalf of our team, I would like to extend our gratitude as well as the best of luck with all your future endeavors. Thank you very much. So nice of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Dear viewers, stay tuned with us as the second part of your weekly program, The Week in 30 Minutes, is about to start. Welcome back to the program. On the occasion of his first, vi first visit to the state of Kuwait as the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, the UNDP office in Kuwait organized a press conference for His Excellency Filippo Grandi. During the press conference, Grandi noted that he selected Kuwait as the first destination for his tour of the Gulf Cooperation Council member states due to the country's leading role in humanitarian issues. Let's watch. UN High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, Flebo Grandi, said that the state of Kuwait, under His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah, offers great support to relief efforts for refugees and needy people around the world. The head of the UN Refugee Agency made his remarks during a joint press conference with the Director General of Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, or KFAED after signing a memorandum of understanding on cooperation between the two aid agencies. I am uh, very happy that on the occasion of my first visit to Kuwait as the new High Commissioner for Refugees, I have had the privilege and the honor to signing, of signing with the Director General of the Kuwaiti Fund for Development such an important agreement. I um, um, this uh, agreement, I would like to define it a new and additional page in the cooperation between the state of Kuwait and UNHCR. And a very promising one, as the Director General has just said. This is a framework agreement, 
And in this context, which has been uh, promoted by His Highness uh, the Amir of Kuwait and by his government, within this framework, as was mentioned, we hope to, we, not that we hope, we are sure that we will start some very important projects together. And we already started discussing some very concrete uh, cooperation. Grandi noted that he selected Kuwait as the first destination in his tour of the Gulf Cooperation Council member states due to the country's leading role in humanitarian issues as well as the strategic partnership between the UN agencies, particularly the Refugee Agency and the State of Kuwait, highlighting that the pivotal role of his leadership given the fact that the Refugee Agency works to alleviate the suffering of the most vulnerable people in conflict hit areas. From UN House in Mishraf area, I am Hab Rahman reporting for the week in 30 minutes. The French Embassy in Kuwait and Campus France Kuwait recently held a press conference on the studies in France in the presence of His Excellency Christian Nechle, the French Ambassador to Kuwait. The event was also attended by two Kuwaiti students who graduated from the French educational system. The press conference was held at the French Institute in Jabriya. More on this topic with correspondent Khanwa Jabouri. France is the world's fifth largest economy and the third most popular destination for internationally mobile students. The quality of its educational system is one of the world's most effective and the national capacity for research and innovation. France is therefore keen to increase the number of Kuwaiti students studying in its universities and whose number has remained low in spite of the strengths that France possesses. Today we are sharing information with our friends in Kuwait. Uh, we wanted to introduce our Campus France uh, uh, office at the Institut uh, uh, Francais, the French Institute in Jabria, in Kuwait. Uh, we are uh, uh, developing this, uh, and very proud of it, to develop uh, this uh, relationship with Kuwait and Kuwaiti students in France. Uh, we are a big country with a lot of opportunities, a, lot, a, a, a large offer of universities and high, uni high education in France. Uh, we want to facilitate uh, the curriculum of the Kuwaitis in France, to facilitate all the, uh, all the process from, the, uh, the, from, the, uh, from learning French, uh, registering yourself at university, uh, getting your visa and going to France. And we are doing this on a very personal uh, uh, way. It means that uh, there's a responsible, and I'm happy to uh, introduce him, it's uh, Bulant Inan and uh, François Pradal. And Bulant is the person here in Kuwait at the French Institute who is responsible of this, uh, of this Campus France office. Speaking at the press conference, His Excellency Christian Nacle noted that France has an advanced and sophisticated educational arena with elite worldwide recognized universities and added that France is a friendly country with a rich culture and is open to receive students who are keen on studying in France. Uh, we are advising, guiding students, Kuwaiti students and, and uh, residents in Kuwait who want to study in France. We have almost 150 uh, Kuwaiti students now in France who are pursuing their study in France. Every year we have, we have 60 students who go to France from Kuwait and we really want to increase this number as there is lots of demand and, very, and lots of opportunities in France. Every student has the same right in France and the tuition fees are very low. Just to complete, uh, that we have a network for all French universities, art schools, business schools, engineering schools, so we have contact everywhere. What we want is good students, but if you have good, you are all the right to study in France, mainly in French, but it's possible in English. And uh, we will help the students. We'll have agreements between Kuwait University, Gust University, AUK, with many uh, French universities in France to help also a kind of mobility 
And the mobility is not only from Kuwait students to France, because we have also some French students who are coming to Kuwait to learn Arabic with scholarship from Kuwait University. The issue of language was raised at the press conference and it was pointed out that there are programs in France that are taught in the English language. Choosing to study in France opens up a wide range of excellent opportunities on a number of levels. From the French Institute, Jabria, I'm Genwa Jaburi reporting to you for the week in 30 minutes. The International Islamic Charitable Organization held its seventh meeting of the top donors for Syrian people with the aim of discussing the humanitarian situation there. The meeting was attended by the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, and the UN Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Partnership with the Middle East and Central Asia, Rashid Khalikov. Here is the report. International Islamic Charitable Organization or IICO Chairman and UN Secretary General's Humanitarian Envoy Dr. Matouk Matouk said that the international community should seek to find genuine political solutions to the Syrian crisis. His remarks came during the opening session of the seventh meeting of major donors supporting Syrian people, adding that the humanitarian efforts couldn't be deemed an alternative to political ones. He also called for protecting civilians, ensuring relief aid access to thousands of besieged people, noting that there are 13.5 million homeless people in Syria and 9.8 million Syrians are locked in sharp food shortage. The most important issue of this meeting, and it's the objective of this meeting, is to, to, tack, uh, to address the follow-up to the London conference uh, on the, 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 the pledging to the Syria conference that took place last February. So the, is the objective of this meeting, which is a me uh, follow-up mechanism, is to follow up on the commitments made by uh, states to address this, uh, this crisis. So it's an extremely important meeting because uh, the situation of the refugees is extremely uh, critical. Uh, the London conference uh, um, came up with a, a new approach that was highly ba uh, promoted by His Highness the Emir of uh, uh, the state of Kuwait, which is to, to focus on the resilience of the, the refugees, education and livelihoods. Uh, and this is uh, extremely important because now we see that crises are protracted. So we need to also Alongside the humanitarian aspects, we need to address the resilience or the education and the livelihoods of the communities so that they can address, uh, basically, not only give them fish but teach them how to fish so that they can fish for themselves, if you like, So, as a matter of uh, speech. So um, this is the, the, the main objective. The United Nations, of course, is here to support the whole process. We have humanitarian agencies and we have agencies such as UNDP which are, who address, you know, the, the, the resilience aspects, you know, in terms of livelihoods, education, health. And we have already worked in these uh, areas and we hope to be able to continue to work in these areas with the support, of course, of member states such as Kuwait. Nearly 25% of Syrian schools are out of service as at least 5,000 schools have been either destroyed or used as shelters, lamenting that the dossier of basic service poses of major challenge owing to deliberately planned attacks on infrastructure utilities. The IICO chief deplored recent battles bomb attacks by governmental forces on hospitals, marketplaces and houses in Aleppo. The donors' meeting mainly aimed at looking into the humanitarian situation in Syria. 